guys uh, today is a uh, day 5 right like uh, day 5 class and uh, till now we have covered on the docker uh, introduction of the docker in a very high level right and uh, with the docker commands right and uh, with all the docker commands we learned about how to create a container right how to do a port mapping and how to kill a container how to remove a container what is the status of the container like uh, docker container stats right stata stats if you can get the statistical information of the container like that we learn many of the things right in a container uh, particularly in the docker now today's topic is actually it is on docker volume okay so before getting into it let me do one thing let me spawn the uh, let me get into the aws console because we have to launch a server or the machine already we have i have not deleted it so it's already there okay at the uh, this was not asked actually security check was not asked i don't know now what is it started asking this okay so i'll go to the institute instance already my instance up and running yesterday i didn't stop it actually it's running only so it is still it's running so guys what we can do here see suppose if i do a connect here if i do a connect and you go to the ssh client here you know that you have uh you know how to connect here as given example so i can copy it and come to the and come to the downloads where i have a pen key okay here i have a pen key so and then like i'll go to the git bash now here uh, what is happening is that i have to test it and then like i am able to log in it fine then i do a sudo su root right so i am successfully logging in able to log in the, as a root account but what is happening that i can actually uh, because if i know a public ip address so if you come here to the instance so you come to the instance here and if you click on here you could see that this is the public ip address right of this machine so you can even log in suppose like for example if i have set a root password i can log in it so how to do it actually so in a root user now so what you have to do firstly you have to open etc ssh ssd underscore conf file if you open right here if you open the file here what is happening that if you i have already did it i'm just showing here here by default what happened right it will be in hash actually so you have to remove that hash it means that permit root login is yes this is you have to unhash it so if you open in your system right this file etc ssh uh, ssh underscore conf if you see this is a file actually so you can note it down this file name okay So we'll go with the day. Docker uh, Today is a day five, right? Day five Docker session. So under this part, right, there would be hash of this actually. So you have to unhash it. You have to remove the hash. Why? Because it says that it has to allow for the root login, right? And after that, once you are removing the hash, come down here. You could see here as something like password authentication, right? Password authentication. Actually, how what it happens? Right? Earlier, this was enabled actually. This was enabled means actually this was a hash, and this was an unhash actually, like this. But here, what it says that password authentication. No, it means that you don't have to uh, use a password to log in into a system. But here, I want it actually. That's what what happened. But here, you have the same parameter, password authentication. Yes. So what you can do better, you can remove hash here, and you can 
add a hash over here. So this you have to do it in this file. Basically in this file, you have to do two, these things. Once you do these things, just save the file, put colon wq, and then say service uh, system CPL restart SSH. SSHD, sorry. So once you run this service, what happened? You are restarting the SSD service. So after this, you have to restart the service. So once you are doing able to do like this, now what is happening that I have to set the root password. So how to do it? I'll say sudo or I'll just say ps is the password. It, it is asking me to set the root password. I will give the root password as something like Red Hat. Enter one more time, Red Hat, enter. So I have given a root password as a Red Hat in my system. Actually. Okay, now what is happening is that actually here you come here, you copy it here. So this is my public IP address. Click on here. Open here, git bash, anywhere you can open now. You have to do SSH root at the rate, specify the IP address, public IP address. And then last for the password, you would have. See, I'm able to log into my machine. So now what is happening that I'm not doing it here like this, how I used to do earlier. Just click on it and connect it and then go to the SSH client. Here, copy. I don't have to do all those things. Now, I don't require this permit key. I'm able to directly log into the server because I know the root password. The root password I've already set as a root, as well as I have, I have, uh, you know, changed these configurations actually and restarted the SSD service so that now I can do a direct login. SSH root at the rate and specify the public IP address. Once you do it, it will ask for the password. Give the password as a Red Hat. Now you are able to, you can log in as a root. So this is one of the way how you can log into system. Clear, sir? Any doubts you have till here? Any confusion or any doubt is there? Let me know. So that we'll move with ahead with the Docker volume. Okay. 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 So I'm able to log in as a root user here, right? Fine. Now we know that already Docker info means Docker is already installed. Now, see what is happening is that what is a Docker volume? So let me open MS Paint. Suppose we have this Docker host, sir. We have this Docker host. This is Docker host, right? In this Docker host, what I have did, I have installed the Docker package. Right, the Docker package I've installed, like yum install docker hyphen y, and then I have did a system CTL start docker like that. I have restarted the Docker everything. Right, so after doing it everything, what happened? That you have set basically you have made this machine as a Docker host. After that, what is happening? That you will try to create many containers. All these containers will be up and running in your Docker host. Now, what is happening that when you're running a container, basically what is happening that you are running some kind of an application. Here, some application is running actually. Now, whatever, whenever the application is running and whenever it want to, uh, it want to do some uh, write into a file or it want to store some data, basically all the data are always stored in your Docker host itself, in your Docker storage itself. So, in your Docker host, you have even the Docker storage, right? Your Docker storage, local Docker storage. Storage is also available. So what the application is doing, application is using the Docker storage area and it is trying to save the data. Where it is saying, how we will see later, okay? So now what is happening is that assume that you are killing that container. Once you are killing the container, even all the data related to that container will get will get uh, will get erased. You will not be able to retrieve the data, right? 
so what is happening is that actually so here locally within your docker host all the datas are maintained within your docker local uh, docker host itself and whenever the application starts running it make use of some storage area within it and whenever it gets deleted automatically all the data whatever the applications are written into that storage even those data will be get erased actually but in the real time right it should not happen right like for example suppose uh, you have hosted or you are running some database uh, you know container here and database container is writing some data you know like uh, data into the into the storage area and assume that actually the container get killed somehow some of the container get killed or it has been stopped or killed even the data whatever it is there related to the database right maybe the data the database has created many tables within a table it has created many of the rows and column and it has written a lot of data it has written a data then it's a loss of the data right that should not happen right so what is happening is that actually here what is happening that you need to somehow save the data so that even though the container is getting killed still you can retrieve back the data so that is what what happened right you have a docker volume it means that basically you can create a docker volume here. like for example let me create one docker volume like this i will create a docker volume so we take this so i will create a volume which we call the docker volume so i'll create externally a docker volume and once i create the docker volume what i will do right i will try to mount this docker volume to this container that means that whenever this container is running or whenever i'm going to start the container basically i'm going to try it uh, and i'm going to try to mount this volume to the running container correct now what is happening that there is some application which is running in this container what that application will be doing that application will be keep writing the data into this volume and what is happening that once it completes a task what happened that the container will get killed or the we are going to stop or kill that container once the container is get killed what is happening is that the container will get killed fine but whatever the data which is built and right that data still persist in this docker volume right it's a persistent volume so you have so what is happening that whatever the data is there it is still saved in this volume so again what happened you can same take the same volume again you can attach to the some other container and you can run it so that you can retrieve back the whole data whatever it is there so now always it is a best practice that whenever you are having some critical application and uh, in a container in a running container and uh, it has to write a lot of data so it is always a good practice that you always uh, you know like uh, create a volume attach that volume to a container and then make sure that all the data whatever the application has to write it has to write into this docker volume right now what is happening that even this docker volume is also there in the, your host itself assume that your whole host itself will go up. the whole host itself will come down means the server itself the physical server where your docker host is even that itself will come down then even even this docker volume will also get lost right that's the reason what is happening is that you need to have some external storage actually you need to have some external storage right you need to have some external storage so what happened right that external storage whatever the external storage it could be some kind of a nas or a sand storage now what is happening that here you have some kind of a partition or the volume here okay this is the partition of the volume here so basically what you have to do first you need to mount suppose like i now you say that rajesh i want to have a container where my container should have an access to a volume but that volume is not there within a docker host itself it is there in somewhere external so now what you have to do means you have to first mount this volume to your first docker host suppose assume that this is what it is this is suppose like this is something like a slash mnt or uh, we volume logic one uh, under that you have something like slash mnt uh, vl wall share there is some folder like this name wall share what you have to do that you need to first mount this the complete thing to the docker host here it has to get mounted first. and after that what is happening that here it has to get mounted so here what is happening is that actually under your 
slash MNT. It is mounted. What it is mounted? Your MNT volume VOL wall shear which is mounted. And after when it is mounted, this this mount point you can actually point to your running container. Now whatever the, what is happening that this container, whatever the application which is up and running, right? This container will be or the application will be writing a data to its slash MNT, but until the slash MNT is nothing but it is point to a slash wall wall share. So whatever the data which is writing, whatever the application, the running container which is writing an a data rate, that would be written into this storage area. So this is the best practice actually, right? Like for example, we have a we have a lot of storage, right? Uh, like for example, we have a lot of storage available today, right? Like for example, what are the storage we have? We have a AWS S3 bucket, right? S3 service is there. Even you can even mount this S3 service to your Docker container, which is running. You can even do a Azure blob storage. Also, you can mount it. Even your GCP, Google Store, also you can mount it. Similarly, what is happening that you can even have, suppose you have a NFS drive actually, NFS, network file share. Even that also you can mount under your running container. Or else the container, whatever the container you are able to run, right, that you can mount even with your NFS also. It means that whatever the data it is writing, it is be writing into your NFS Share location or share point actually. So the advantage, as you know, that even the Docker host itself will get, uh, you know, will if it comes down or if the whole system get crashed actually. Still, what is happening that whatever the containers which are running, and if those are using some mount points which is from the external storage device, right, all your data will be safe actually. So again, what happened once the system goes down, you can set up one more system where you can install the Docker host and everything, and you can remount the same NFS share to the newly created, uh, you know, container so that you can retrieve all the data. So that's how it happens. Like this. Okay, sir. So this is what it is. And uh, till here, any doubts you have? Any doubts? Okay, so that's how it is. So it is uh, uh, like it is always very good that in an interview they'll ask you this question actually. Very very much they ask actually. Now now you say that actually sir when you're running a container where you are going to keep all the containers data. You say so basically what happens they'll be expecting you to tell uh, an answer from the external uh, storage device right. So a lot of people say this example of NFS actually. They said, sir, we are going to store all the data of our application running in our container into our NFS shared drive. So how you are going to, then they will ask, what is an NFS? How you configure NFS and how you mount it to an NFS shared drive to this application so that it will start writing. So to say, sir, NFS shared drive, first I have to mount to my Docker host to some, uh, you know, like to some drive actually. And from their drive, we need to point into your application actually. So then they will ask you like how you to do that actually can you show me so you have to write a command and show it how exactly it happens and they will ask you what is an advantage of being an nfs why you are choosing nfs and all some questions would be asked in this area so you have to answer it like what is the advantage of being an nfs share actually so basically what happened right nfs share when once you do nfs share right you can have a multiple container which are actually mounted to the same nfs share itself right same NFS here. Like for example, here what happened, right? Here a developer, he will write his all his web applications here in his NFS server and he will try to place all his applications under NFS server and he will make sure that this application, whatever it is there in NFS server, something like some HTML actually, he will try to make sure that all the containers will mount to this NFS share and it access those applications. It means that if you're having a multiple containers like this and you are hosting this the same application so it is always better that whatever the data which you write for that application right or whatever the data is there for the application to run it get mounted it get mounted to all this different 
um, what is that different? It gets mounted to all these different containers infrastructure. So that what happened, right? It's very easy to manage it. You can maintain something like you can maintain a high availability, right? Yeah. What happened? Uh, let me set it. So here, what is happening that you are running a multiple container, but same the same container are running the same application because you have the whole application code you have written in this NFS shared drive. And here, what is happening that whenever the client want to access this application, so here you will maintain a kind of a load balancer here. So through the load balancer, what happened, right? Uh, load balancer is like this. It could be any load balancer, right? Now what is happening that whenever the client, whenever the client, some client Hello. is there. Hello. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Ah, uh, Rajesh. So, like, in case if the NFS will go offline or any issues with the, the backend storage, then mm -hmm. at the same time, all the three containers will also go offline, right? They will yes. lose the connection. Yes, yes, you lose the connection. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. But what happened right here? What happened again? You have a backup of this data actually. You know, it's not okay. only that okay, one copy of data will be there. You will be keeping it uh, one or two copies of the data also. Okay. okay. So we'll be having a cluster of NFS server actually, like that. So it is a rare chance sir, because you are actually maintaining everything in in your SAN storage, right? You cannot say that SAN will go down, right? SAN will go down, but there is a backup of all those data probably uh, are there, right? They will make sure that. The data should not go at any point of time, right? So, uh, basic what happened? They will uh, use some rate concept and they'll do some mirroring and all right, so that the replicas yeah. of the data would be there. Okay, okay. So, like that. So, here what is happening is that actually here the volume plays a very important role, right? Now we understood. Now, what we'll do, we'll take some examples now, sir. We'll see how exam how things work actually. So now we'll go back to our server here. Okay. Now Okay, what we'll do, we will we'll see whether what are the containers which are running. Docker container ls, nothing is there. Docker image ls docker image ls open a. Nothing is there, sir. Everything uh, even I don't have any image, even I don't have any container which is running. Let me don't think. Let me do the same thing. Like for example, if I have a Docker container. Um, let me undo the let me run the Ubuntu. Okay, what I'll do, I'll do a slash. So I'm pulling the Ubuntu. Now, what you are doing, like you have got into your Ubuntu inside your Ubuntu container or you inside your Ubuntu image, then after that, what you do, sudo app get date. Right, just an example I'm showing you. Pudo, okay, app get pudo is not there as this is app get update. So app get install actually. So we're installing the Apache, right? Okay, here you have to give uh, some regional things you have to give. So that's all. So once you do it, actually, once you install the Apache, you could see that actually under slash where www.html, you have this index.html, right? Here you can say something. Welcome to Docker volume topic something. Right, and then index dot html. So written it. Now I'll say service uh, acrv acrv is Apache two. We have seen this example right last time also. So it's Apache two start. So we restarted the service. Now what is happening is that now if I go back to the other terminal and I for say Docker container ls, you could see that your image is up and running. Right, your image is up and running. So I want to check what is the IP address. You know now that Docker container inspect and specify the container ID. 
So you could see that this is the IP address, right? So I can even run a curl command actually. Just check whether you are able to get the response. So now you could see that you are able to see the content of the index.html. So now the Apache service is running fine and the content is also up and running, right? So this is how we confirm it. Now assume that actually I'll uh, assume that I'll go here. I'll say Docker container ls. Docker container ls. So this is it. Assume that I will kill the Docker container. Docker container rm f give the container ID. Access your application now. You're not able to access because as soon as you remove the container, even the application which is running, which was there in the container, even though that container, that application is also gone now. So it means that you cannot retrieve your data. Your data is gone now. Now, to understand it, to make it simpler, to understand it, okay, man, I should not lose my data. So how I can protect my data, even though the container is down? So what we will say that do one thing, keep all your data into your container, sorry, in your volume, actually. So to do that, what Docker does, Docker gives a command with, uh, with uh, Docker, there's one uh, parental uh, module is there, one is there, Docker volume. Docker space volume, and if you give hyphen hyphen help, you could see that actually Docker volume is there, and for that, the subcommands are create, inspect, ls, prune, remove, all these things are there. So let me do one thing. First say Docker, Docker volume ls. So right now you could see that there are no volumes in my Docker. So let me create a new volume. I'll say Docker volume create, right? And specify some volume name, like compose, like something like a my volume. One second, please. So, sorry, guys, some call. I got a call. Got a call now. So, I created a volume. Okay, with the name my volume. Now, if you do a Docker volume ls, you could see that you have created a volume with the name my volume so it is a volume name actually right and it says something like a driver local what is it we'll see later okay something like it is using some local driver to communicate with this my volume okay now suppose like what i will do now let me do thing let me do a docker volume uh, inspect and specify my volume now if you do an inspect of my volume you could see that actually your my volume right this is actually this is mounted under slash where lip docker volume my volume data like this like this now now wh what is it actually if you see this path right slash lib docker what you have to say that you have to say so the docker uh the docker manages all its components or all its configurations under slash where slash where slash lib slash docker. So this is the path, sir. This is the ultimate path where what happened at Docker ma maintains all kind of information or the data. So if somebody asks in an interview where exactly the Docker maintains all its information, let it be configuration information, let it be container information, let it be volume information, let it be network information, you have to say this is the path slash lib slash where lib Docker. This is the ultimate, uh, you know, like uh, uh, you can say ultimate path. It is like a home directory for your Docker, you have to say. This is the home directory, home directory of your Docker, of the Docker. Now here, what is happened that, what it says that by default, this volume, whatever the my volume is there, right? That is actually, it has been mounted here, correct? 
that is mounted here this is the mount point and what it says the it is created what is the time it has created what kind of a driver it is using to communicate something like local what is the name of the volume it's a my wall and some options you can also pass it like that so basically you are getting some kind of a metadata about this my wall now what is happening that now you say that rajesh i want to mount this uh, my volume so how to do that actually now you see that how i can do it docker Container run hyphen it okay hyphen of a name of the volume suppose something like I will give as a web server something name will be web server here I will give hyphen view option mount what is your volume the volume name is my volume where you want to mount it I want to mount under slash temp what is the image Ubuntu and you have to use slash temp. So what you are doing here, basically, whatever the volume you have, right? That volume you are actually mounting into the Ubuntu image temp directory. Temp directory. Now what is happening? That and after that you are doing a slash bin slash slash. Now you are into the bash. No? Now let me do. Let me do one thing. Let me go to the temp directory. And here nothing is there. Let me do one thing. Let me create some file. Now you could see that I have created some files. Let me click on that logo. So Rajesh, why this my volume is coming from sand storage, right? Whenever we create any new volumes in the no, Docker. No, no, no. It's coming within your Docker host itself. That's what. See what is happening that when you created a Docker volume create, it is actually creating under this part. See, mm -hmm. under where lib Docker, here there is a volume directory. Under that, it is creating the same name, my volume. Under that, there's one more underscore data. Now you could see that here. You could see that here. I am creating some files and directories. Now what happened? I'll go to the other this one. Let me do one thing. Let me go to the same part. Slash var lib docker. If you say ls, can you see there are so many other directories are there? Now here I get into this volume directory. See the volumes. So I'll say ls. See my vol. So this is the volume name which you gave right while creating it. I'll say my, my volume. You could see. CD underscore data. Can you see all this data now? Whatever you created here, can you see the same data here? Correct. Okay. So what is happening that? So what you did, you just mounted this my wall under the temp while running an image. And what is the image you want to use? It means that you need a Ubuntu server and you went to the slash bash. Because you mounted this my volume into the temp directory, here you went to the temp and you created all these files and directories. But when I come to the machine, when I come to this path, when I do a disk, I when I went to this path, I could see the same files and directories. Means that all this data are stored in this volume path slash where lib docker volume and the volume name. Under that, there is something with the underscore data. Here everything is stored. Right, correct, sir. Now if I go here, if I say <laughs> docker container ls. Now you could see that you are able to images up and running. Now I'll do one thing Docker container run rm hyphen f specify the container name web server. See, you are removing the container. Now again, if you said Docker ls, now you could see that your container is no more running. But what will happen? Whatever the data which you have written, right? That still persists, right? See, if you say LS here, see, still that data, data is there. Now, again, what you can do, you can create one more container, Docker container. Ah. Ah. One second, guys, and I'll be back. Oh, sorry guys somebody came okay so uh where i was yeah so what i'm doing that i am actually creating one more container now right docker container run 
hyphen it hyphen as a name what is it web hyphen server or web server one something i can give any name i can give web server one i will try to mount the same my wall volume <coughs> under the same directory of you want to update one more image now you could see that actually you go to the temp directory can you see still you have the data right correct right yes I yes that actually even though you remove the container still the data exists because this is the it is a kind of a persistent volume you say correct sir any doubts you have till here so that we'll proceed further so you can mount as many time as you can it's not only in this image you can even mount it to some other images also the same volume can you can mount it in the multiple different images also it's possible and uh, how many volumes we can create like uh, likewise or like uh... it depends upon like how much the storage uh, is okay. used by your actually okay and same volume can be shared across uh, multiple containers as images yeah. right Yes, yes, yes. Multiple containers are shared, okay. but you have to make sure that actually the redundancy of the data has to be maintained, right? Like for example, you cannot simply remove a data or something like that. If you are if you want to manage the consistency of the data, means you need to make sure that actually while sharing with multiple containers, you should not distract other uh, containers' data. So it is not a recommended way because every uh, you know like container will have its own volume. but you can mount the same volume to the different container that's possible but it is not recommended you to do it yeah. because the same one volume it many of the other contents will be doing some kind of read and write operation right correct correct yeah so that you should take care of it that so and one more thing rajesh bhai like see here we are mounting the my volume under temp slash temp directory okay and correct. the same number of files will be automatically replicated to the configuration underscore data folder of uh, in hmm. container right the yes. same thing will be again it will be replicated to the same configurational under my volume underscore data folder correct means correct. that directory correct correct okay see now what is happening that right? here uh, like yeah now you could say that actually now uh, you could see that the docker container ls now you could see that this container is running now you have this container id you say docker container inspect and specify the container id now if you see here here so it has used the volume but it is used the volume what is the source of the volume see slash where docker volume my volume underscore data what's the destination slash temp directory see? okay uh -huh. so it means that actually whatever the data which was is there in this path right that has been mounted into the running contain containers temp directory and to access this data you require some kind of a driver and the driver is a local driver so like this so even if it has all kind of a mount points and what is the volume and where it is mounted everything like that it is there okay sir okay i yeah, got it okay sir now what we will do so we will do one thing sir now what we'll do we'll play we'll uh, do some real time uh, activity now uh, what we are going to do like i'll use the same volume my volume but this time what i will do uh, let me don't think let me don't think docker volume uh, ls i'll do so the my volume i'll say uh, docker volume inspect and spec in in s p c t right inspect my volume correct right? now what happened right you know that the volume my volume is actually it is it is there in this path actually right i will copy this thing i'll go to this path and i'll see that all this data so let me don't let me remove all this data i remove it now what i will do i don't think i'll have a data something like uh, something hello india I will read it to the index dot. So basically, in my volume, in this my volume data, I have one file on the index dot php. Okay, let me mount this uh, file into an image where the Apache is running actually. So what is my requirement now? I need to mount the my volume 
into an image where Apache is running. And where you want to mount, you know that whenever the Apache is running, the index.php, uh, index.php or index.html by default will be done the slash by wwhtml, right? Perfect. Now what is happening that I want to have an image. So now my requirement, uh, could you some, uh, could you please uh, mute it yourself? Now my requirement is that I need a image where Apache is already present. For that, what I have to do now, I have to build an image. I have to build a new image where Apache is installed. Where Apache is installed. So how to do that? So as I said, right now, what is happening that whenever you are doing, whenever the Docker is doing some kind of a full activity from the you know hub.docker.com, you know very well that these are all the customized image, customized image. Sorry, these are all the public images. Sorry, public images which many people have uploaded and you can make use of it. Tomorrow there's a requirement that no, like uh, it's not only customized, uh, it is not only the public image. I want to design my application where my application has to be hosted into some particular uh, environment. So I have to build my own customized image. So how to do that? What Docker will do? Docker will provide your provisioning of creating a Docker file actually. See, next week, sir, we'll be having a Docker file. I will not be uh, getting in detail now today. I'll be just showing you like how to create a Docker file and how to create an image out of it. So whenever you create a Docker file, how you have to do means, uh, whenever you need to create Docker file, first you need to have a base image. Sir. You need to have a base image. So you want to start with the base image, you have to use from uh, command. From is one of the commands. Suppose I say that I need a Ubuntu. 14 something, some version 14.04. Okay. So I have a image of the Ubuntu, which is of 14 point. Even you can take 18.02 or 18 point or 20 also. But let me take some older image. So I'm using this image from. So what is happening that whenever you want to build an image, you need to have first base image. So how you can use a base image by using a from command. Like that, you have to understand. From Ubuntu colon 14.04 is a version which I'm requiring. Okay. After that, what you want? I have to, once I get the image, I have to install some package. How to do that? I have to use a run command. Run apt get update y and run apt get install apache to hyphen y. So I'm installing an apache package. Correct. And you say run service what is it? Apache to start. This is a very small Docker file I have written, sir. A very small Docker file. Now, after you write it, you have a Docker file. How you compile it or how you build the image? You have to use a command Docker image. Uh, what is the command? Build hyphen P. Specify the image, something like my web image. And specify Docker. Hold a second, sir. Okay. Now, here, so I'll do one thing here. You'll come here. Okay. Let me create a doc. Uh, let me create. Now, what is happening is that whenever you are creating a Docker file, okay, so I have to create with the same name like this, Docker file. Initially, we'll be learning like this way. Later tomorrow, you can even write your own file. Suppose Naresh want to open, write his own uh, file. You can say vi uh, Naresh uh, something Docker file. Something he can write anything. He can even choose his name also. But for the convention, what happened? Most of the people will be using a Docker file with the same name, like like this. The D should be uppercase, and this all should be small. So Docker file. So then. Go to the insert mode from same thing Ubuntu 14.04. So that's our one I am using. Run. What is it? APT get update hyphen y. Then run 
apt get install apache 2 hyphen y then you have to start the service run service apache 2 start so now what you are doing here here you are running a multiple run command so basically what happened right what run will do run will basically run this instruction in this image it means that in this image base image you are actually after you get the base image you are actually executing all this instruction in this image itself so here what happened that you are upgrading the package you are installing the apache as well as you are restarting the service so what is happening that this run will get executed when your container is running right when your container is running it is actually building a image actually so here what here you are doing that here you are trying to run many of the run commands here but practically speaking suppose you have some 10 instruction if you use a 10 10 times run command it is practically it is not good when when you are writing a docker file why it is not good i will tell you later but basically to why it is not good because i will tell you that if you are running one command with using the run what it will tell you know, it will lead to creation of a layer it will create it will lead to creation of one layer what is it layer we'll see discuss later again you are running one more instruction the same thing here this will also lead to creation of second layer one more layer second layer and obviously the third one is also will create so as many number of layers are getting increased in your docker right the size of the docker will also get increased and it is not a good practice actually in the industry what is happening that whenever you are writing any docker uh, file or whenever you are creating an image actually the size of the image should be very small it should not have many layers it should have a very less layers what is this layers and all we'll be discussing after some time maybe after another 15 20 minutes later we'll be discussing that so here what i'm doing that i'm running many of the run instruction but this is not a good practice what you can do basically here at the top here you can do one thing uh, like this and and Sorry, uh, here you can remove it. So here in only one line, you are updating the package as well as you are installing the Apache. And here in the next line, okay, let it maintain as it is. Okay, for the service restart, I will maintain one run run command as it is. So here, what is happening? Here? You have reduced one layer here. So if you are reduced, so while right, executing this line, the complete. It is doing both the job, but here in this case, it is only creating only one layer, not two layers. Here, whereas it was creating a two layer, you have combined these two commands into one and you have reduced to create one layer actually. So that's how it is. And now what is happening that you have to save this. Now what is happening that you need to build it, Docker image, build, uh, what is the command? Build, build hyphen P, okay. And specify the Docker file name. By default, what happened that right? you, whenever you have a Docker file name, you have to only give the path means you have to only give the dot here. When you give the dot, what Docker will do? Docker will check if there is any file in the present directory by the name Docker file. Yes, this is there. So start building this Docker file. Now you see if I, if I execute it, what will happen? Docker build Docker image b u i l d build docker what is it sir docker image i can open help uild right correct no correct docker image uild build hyphen p Yes, you have to give the image name, right? What is the image name? I want to I want to just create my web image something and then say the dot. Correct. You have to give the image name. No? What image it will create? Now you could see that it is actually building an image. Now, if you are building an image, you could see that it is building some three images, combination of three images, like step one. Now here you could see that it is actually running the update, and now it will be installing even the Apache now after this. The small question, Raj, like how it picks the Docker file? It will check for only the current directory and it will pick the yes. file when name. For... Yeah, when you are doing a dot here, when you're giving dot, uh -huh. dot is the present working directory. Yes. Okay. See, here you can give this path also. Like, for example, here where I am under slash root, right? You can give this way also. Right? 
like this. Oh, under the slash root, what Docker will do by default, if you're not specifying anything, what Docker will do, Docker will always look for this file name. Always. Okay. Okay. If this file name is something other different name, suppose I'll move this Docker file as Ashish underscore Docker file, something like this. Now what is happening that Docker image build hyphen P Ashish something Ashish web image hyphen F. Now you have to specify what is your file name like this. Like this, you have to specify the file name itself with the hyphen F option. So I will tell you how to use this. This is not the correct way. I'm okay. just saying that if you're not giving the, if you don't know how to, you, uh, I mean, uh, what happened right? hyphen F is for some other name, apart from the Docker file, some other name is there. Then you have to specify hyphen F option like that. So like, So here, what is up there? I'm trying to build this image with the help of this command. Right? So it has built now. Now when you say docker image ls, you could see that my web image is running now. Now you know that in the docker volume, if you execute at the docker volume, docker volume ls, you have a my volume, right? Under that, what happened? You had created from index dot, right? So let me do one thing. Now let me run a container. Docker container run hyphen it. Okay. What is hyphen hyphen name? My web server something. Okay. You are trying to mount this my wall under the slash var www dot HTML and what is the image name? My web image slash bin slash slash. What is it? What is the wrong with it? My web server, my wall. You are trying to invalid reference format docker container run hyphen it. Okay, you have missed to give hyphen v option here. Right, I will be option here. We're not doing it. Now, what's happening? You are mounted now. Right now, you go to the other terminal. Docker container ls. Now you could see that your my web server is running, and this is nothing but the container ID. If I do a Docker container inspect. So this is the IP address, right? You can take this IP address and run now. Call command to so just check. See, what is it? It has not restarted, I think. It has not restarted here. Okay, I'll do one thing. So it's Apache. It's Apache 2. Now, then run the command. Here now, could see that. It is showing that. Right. So now what you're doing that you are actually maintaining your application under your my volume, right? And after that, what happened, right? I created my own image with the name of my web image. I'm mounting that my volume under the slash var lib slash var www.html of this my image, right? So it means that actually whenever I want to tweak my application, I need not to get inside the container only, right? I can do the tweaking of it, everything in my volume itself because already this volume is mounted under this slash www. So you can go here directly, right? Like for example, you can go to this my volume. You know that actually my volume, what is it? Slash CD, slash var, lib, docker, what is it? You have a volume, under that you have a my volume, under that you have a data. Here you have an index.html, right? You can even say, Welcome, Amdi. Welcome all, Amdi. Now you can do it. What you can do here? You can use the curl command to do it, right? You execute the curl command. See, I'm able to run it. So what I'm trying to do here, what I'm trying to tell you here is that actually, 
I'm not doing any changes inside the container, and we, I'm, I don't, I don't want to even get inside the container to do the any changes to the application. I can manage the whole thing in my my volume itself. Correct. It means that suppose a developer has uh, developed some application, he want to tweak it. He can, you should not get into that running control at all. He can do from outside because he knows that this volume is already being mounted, right, under that image, running image. And you can tweak whatever application changes you want to do. You want, you can keep it here. Sir. So this is the best way, right? This is one of the practical uh, uh, way of showcasing like how exactly you can uh, make use of a volume in a running container. Correct, sir? Okay. Yeah. Any doubt? Yes. Any doubts you have? Till here. No? Okay. Okay, sir. Let me don't think. Me. Hello. We'll do one thing. We will take one more example. A very good example of uh, you know, like uh, suppose I want to create a uh, you know, I want to create a database, and uh, I want to you know, like store all the database uh, information into my uh, volume and uh, see how it works. Right now, what is happening? That one more example for the volume. Like I have the volume Docker volume. Ls. Sorry, got one more call. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, uh, what we'll do basically, we will uh, we will play, we will uh, use a MySQL, uh, you know, like we will create a MySQL container. So, Docker image ls. If you do it, so we don't have a MySQL. So, let me do thing. Let me do a pull of Docker 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 pull MySQL. So you are actually pulling a MySQL image from your uh, central repository, which is on demand hub.docker.com. Okay, sir. Now what you're doing is that you have a MySQL image. Now, if I do a Docker, suppose if I do a Docker image ls, you have a MySQL. If I do a Docker image uh, inspect. And specify the MySQL name or the image ID name. Now you could see that this MySQL rate, uh, this image rate, it the volume mount point for MySQL is always slash var lib MySQL. You have to always remember this, sir. Slash var lib MySQL is the default path or path where the volume will be mounted and whatever the data. Which uh, you know, like which uh, the MySQL is writing, right? That will be writing onto this part itself. Okay, so this is one thing. So this is the mount point. This is where it, it uh, you know, it mounts the volume, and uh, rest other things are okay. Okay, so this is what it, the main thing is. This is what I needed. Okay, now what is happening? That let me run a container now, uh, MySQL container now. So for that, I have to run a command uh, Docker. The container run hyphen it hyphen hyphen name my db server something. Now, whenever you are running a MySQL uh, uh, container, right, you have to pass some environment variable. Like, for example, you have to pass whenever you want to pass environment variable, you have to use a hyphen option. Then, what is the parameter? What is the environment variable? MySQL underscore allow underscore empty 
underscore uh, what is it password is equal to true okay and then specify the image name my screen now we will run it what is happening that here we are not giving any shell here so i am making of this terminal itself making of the terminal itself so now what is happening is that this container is running here and it is using the port number 3306 okay and this is the location where the pid is running basically it has occupied the terminal now now i'll do one thing i'll go to the other terminal i'll go to this terminal okay and what i will do i'll say docker container ls let's see that my scale is up and running and this is the name of the container right now what i'll do i'll get inside this container now so how to do that docker container exec hyphen it interactive uh what is it my i can even give this container id or you can give the name itself okay slash bin slash bash you can either do slash bin slash bash or you can just give bash also like this okay you will get inside the container right now here you are get you are get inside the container because here you have occupied the whole terminal itself that's the reason in the other terminal i'm doing this that's it so now what's happening i will run a mysql command here so when you run our mysql command you got into a mysql form here what is happening that you can even say show databases you show what are all the databases are there here okay or else you can even create a database create the database here uh, something like uh, Rajesh. Okay, now again you say show databases. So you could see that actually Rajesh database is created. Similarly, you can say even say create uh, database, database India, something. And say show database. So you have created a two database here, right, sir? Now what I will do, I will just say exit out. From this MySQL as well as I'll exit out from the container. Now, what is happening is that actually when you do a Docker volume ls, you could see that actually there's one more volume has been created so here. 780, something it is created here. Now, if I do a Docker uh, uh, volume inspect. And specify this. See, it is actually showing something, sir. It is showing here that this is a new volume which has been created with some name actually. And under this, there is some data. Is there. Let me get into this data, sir. Let me see what is it actually. It dissolved the database, sir. So it means that whatever the database uh, MySQL is running, by default, it has created its own volume, one volume with some name actually. And un under that name, under the underscore data, it is actually writing there. You could see that there is an India database, there's a Rajesh database, and these are all the information about your database. It is maintained. Now, what is happening is that actually, I will do one thing. Uh, and uh, or else, if you want to have, see here, this is the this is the volume name the 7e81 just remember this name 7e81 now if you do a docker container ls and if you do a docker container inspect and specify this container id or the name of the server any code anything could be okay so just remember 7e81 now if you see where it is mounted somewhere See, 7081. See, this is the volume by default it is using. And the, it is mounted onto to this path actually. Means the data is there in the this path. And where this is mounted, it is by default, it always mounted on the slash get my SQL. Now, what is happening is that suppose assume that if you do a Docker container ls and you try to remove this container, Docker container rm f and specify this name of the ID. Okay. You have removed the container, MySQL container. When you do a Docker container ls, it is gone, sir. Now, 
correct now what is happening is that but when you do a docker volume ls you could see still that volume is there so the data is there still now you what you can do you can again read an one more container is the same thing but this time what is happening is that actually here what is happening is that anything like but while create now what is appears you are running a new instance of the mysql but you want to mount the same database here you have to use a hyphen v option and here what is happening that you have to give this volume name copy here where you want to mount this i know that i want to mount on the slash var lib mysql and this is the environment and this is the your image see again you are running your database with a new database now okay so it is using and uh, of course i am not given any slash bin slash bash as we need to get in shell it is using this port number here and here if you go back to here go back to the other terminal to a docker container ls now you could see that your own more new container is running now now you you could get into docker container Or what is it? Docker container exec. I mean IP. And specify your name. Slash bin slash bash or just a bash. Got into a container. Now it's a MySQL. Now it's a show data show database. Sorry, you could uh, you could still see your database is there. so this is how this is one of the practical example of showing like how exactly the volume comes to the picture sir clear yeah clear rajesh bhai just one small question like uh, whenever you are running in a docker container you are giving docker container run hyphen it then in some mm. cases you have given exec as well right to get into that container mm. correct mm. so then if you have exec also then what is the difference in between attach and exec even in attach also we can get into the container no you can use both ways either you can use attach or either you can use exec also both are same actually okay 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 just to clarify the difference i will get back to you on that actually there should not be any difference as per my knowledge But if there is okay. any difference, attach and exec, I will just go through that. I will let you know. Ah, okay. Even I'll I'll check that also. Yeah. But what happened is you can attach uh, to the con running container or the uh, running container. So if you attach it, actually, what is happening that you you are attaching uh, to that container with help of a shell. Actually, here exec means actually you are executing it. What to execute it? You want to execute so that you get into that shell. I think it's both are same, sir. I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me do an exit. Do exit here. Docker rmf mydb server. Okay. Perhaps one more practical thing. Suppose like uh, suppose I want to. I am creating one directory only like this. Mydb. Or something like I have written my dear under slash my dear only uh, my dear only we are trying to write some data like this. Touch one right to control. So what you are doing? You here you have created a my directory and you do it. Now what is happening? You can say Docker container run if an IP. Hyphen V. What is it? You want to mount the my dear itself. Under where? Under where? My dear. Where you want to mount? Mount under the stem directory of which image you want to use? Slash bin slash bash. So now what is it? Go to the stem directory and see under the this whole my directory itself is being mounted to the stem. Whatever the files you have, right? You could see here inside the container. right so this is also best way actually instead of you are doing the copying into it everything whatever you can actually have one uh, directory or something you can write all the data and you can mount on the temp of this image and later this image 
which itself it wants any of the data right it can it can access those data from the same data correct so that's all sir that's that's all about the volume so yeah of course we have not understood about the layers and all it uh, we can cover it next class i think that's what uh, today i think we can stop it today session okay we can i can get into a docker register and all but again i need uh, something on half an hour i need for that actually. so we will see it like in the next uh, class so but uh, i want to discuss few of the things uh, but people are lot of much people are not available today but you know okay we'll i think we can stop the uh, you know we can stop the recording then we can discuss okay i'll, I'll stop it yeah